Data models refer to the way data is organized within a database. While you can just take whatever data shows up and throw it into a database haphazardly, it's going to be a challenge to find and use that data effectively. So the data model will serve as a blueprint to help us and our database system to define the structure, relationships, and rules for our data. When it comes to how tables are structured, there's kind of one continuum. On the right is a normalized table. In database theory, there are five normal forms or guidelines that ensure a database is efficient, organized, and free from data anomalies. The more normal forms that are applied, the more the table and fields are broken down and isolated for very specific purposes. Commonly, third normal form is the standard for transactional databases. It gives the best protection from data corruption while avoiding the complexity and performance cost of going all the way to fifth normal form. OLTP systems use third normal form because it's optimized for machine reading, which is what's handling the transactions. On the left end, where there's no normal forms applied, this is called a denormalized structure. Analytical systems prefer denormalized databases because they're optimized for human reading, which is who is doing the bulk of analysis. These are going to have much wider tables where the data is clearly spelled out. For example, normalized tables break the data out into numerous tables that need to be joined together on keys, which is a pain if a human wants to read through the data. Where a denormalized table has all the fields in plain text, which is easy to read. For these analytical systems, there are a few different models that have been popular. The top-down enterprise data warehouse, the most common dimensional data warehouse, data vault, and the one big table approach. And today we're going to focus on one big table and dimensional warehouses. One big table is a very denormalized approach. It's popular with modern cloud-based databases that can scale to handle processing. This design is very unoptimized for machine operations, but very quick and easy for analysis on a data set. It's pretty simple. If there's a table about customers, it has all of the data related to customers. If there's a table about shipping, it has all the data about shipping. It doesn't matter if there's overlap in data, you just store it in both places, and your ingestion operations have to handle keeping everything updated and in sync. The dimensional model is more in the middle. It's somewhat normalized into star schemas. Stars are made up of dimensions, which generally contain reference data, and facts, which are the measurements. For example, a fact table might be sales, where the supporting dimensions are customer, product, and date, which are references for the sales transaction. In this case, if your shipping data and your customer data has overlap, you might use a dimension shared between different fact tables to limit the amount of duplication of data in your data warehouse. The star schema is pretty easy to read with a central measure and then a handful of tables only one join away. But it's a little bit more processing friendly by the limited amounts of fields returned in a query per table. It works well for the bulk data queries that analytical processing demands. The star schema is usually built around a specific process such as customer billing. This is a first level data mart. A group of processes, let's say sales, will have a few star schemas. This is a second level data mart. An entire organization's data marts combined creates the data warehouse. No matter which model you choose, they aren't just about how tables are structured. During the modeling process, you need to spend time breaking down each table. Determine what the keys are for each data set, what are the relationships between the different data sets, what data types and lengths you're going to use consistently for fields. What is the naming for fields that can be agreed on by all business units? And a lot of the data modeling process is just sitting down with stakeholders and making them agree on something. There's no single data model that works for everything, which is why data modeling is such an essential skill. You have to weigh the pros and the cons of your use cases and accept some trade-offs. And ultimately, you need to balance the best option for human processes, machine processes, and business processes.